Thanks to Truebill for sponsoring today's video. Truebill helps you reach your financial goals by canceling unwanted subscriptions, negotiating bills on your behalf, and budgeting. Download Truebill for free by heading to truebill.com health or by clicking the link in the video description. In honor of Mental Health Awareness Month, we've dedicated May's episodes to treatments for depression. In the last three weeks, we've covered cognitive behavioral therapy, psilocybin, and ketamine. In our final episode of this series, we're covering transcranial magnetic stimulation, an FDA-approved treatment for depression that alters the brain's electrical activity. That's the topic of this week's healthcare triage. Magnets, how do they work? Well, today we're gonna ignore the advice of the insane clown posse and look to scientists to learn about transcranial magnetic stimulation. Otherwise known as TMS, this was approved by the FDA in 2008 for treatment of major depressive disorder. This non-invasive procedure applies repetitive electromagnetic pulses to the scalp, stimulating nerve cells at targeted sites in the brain that are thought to have decreased activity in depressed individuals. This procedure involves a device called a TMS coil, which sounds a little more intimidating than it looks. The coil is placed against the head to target a specific area of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, which is the foremost region of the brain, and then quick electromagnetic pulses are administered. Currently, TMS therapy is generally administered five days a week for four to six weeks, with each session typically lasting somewhere between 15 and 40 minutes, and is prescribed for patients who have not responded to other depression treatments. It's an outpatient treatment with few side effects, and patients can drive and resume other normal activities right after their appointments. Though data are limited on the long-term effects, there seems to be a general consensus that effects can last somewhere between six months and one year, though it varies considerably between patients. So what exactly did the data say? To the research! Evidence on TMS efficacy is somewhat mixed. In a 2010 randomized controlled trial published in JAMA Psychiatry, researchers delivered left prefrontal TMS or a sham control every day for three weeks to 190 individuals with major depressive disorder. A sham control is simply a control group that undergoes the same treatment or procedure as the experimental group, but without the effective agent, if you will. So in this case, individuals in the sham control group would undergo all the same procedures, including having the coil placed on their head, but they would not have received the actual electromagnetic pulses. So using that setup, this trial found that 14.1% of patients receiving TMS achieved remission of their depression, compared to only 5.1% of patients in the control group. Looking at more current data, a 2018 systematic review and meta-analysis of randomized, sham-controlled trials reported efficacy of high-frequency TMS of a specific region of the prefrontal cortex, but not for synchronized TMS, which uses lower levels of energy than traditional TMS. A 2016 systematic review and meta-analysis examined 29 randomized controlled trials of TMS compared to either a sham treatment or electroconvulsive therapy. When comparing TMS with sham control groups, the authors reported a 10% absolute difference between groups in remission or response rates. This was statistically significant, but did not meet their pre-specified threshold for being clinically significant. They report the number needed to treat is 10, meaning 10 patients must be treated for every one patient that experiences remission. In the 2010 study we just covered, the number was 12. Interestingly, the researchers report that when analyzing trials that compared TMS and electroconvulsive therapy, TMS was less effective, both statistically and clinically. So what is electroconvulsive therapy? It's a bit more involved than TMS, requiring the patient to go under general anesthesia, and is also less targeted than TMS, triggering a brief seizure throughout the brain with small electric currents delivered through electrode pads placed on the head. It may also have some cognitive side effects, like memory loss, though this is is becoming less of a concern with improvements in the method. The procedure is considerably shorter than TMS, lasting only five to 10 minutes, though that doesn't count preparation and recovery. In the United States, patients receive six to 12 treatments, generally two to three times a week for three to four weeks. Data on the length of time that these effects last are also limited, and though it seems to vary considerably from patient to patient, the relapse rate may be more than 80% six months after therapy. So based on this evidence, is TMS worth a try? Maybe. While this therapy may not be a miracle, it can help, especially in patients whose depression has been resistant to other treatments. As always, talk to your healthcare provider about the treatments available and or most suited to your specific situation.
Thanks again to Truebill for sponsoring today's episode. Truebill is the all-in-one personal finance app that helps you to take control of your financial life, helping you save more and spend less. Truebill safely and securely identifies recurring charges and cancels unwanted subscriptions for you with just a tap. Truebill can negotiate your bills for you from internet service bills to credit card bills. Just upload a photo of your bill to get started. To try it out for free, head to Truebill.com health or click the link in the video description below. Hey, did you enjoyed this episode? You might enjoy our previous episode on ketamine for treating depression or the episodes before that on CBT and psilocybin. We'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel, like the video down below, and think about going to patreon.com slash healthcare triage, where you can help support the show and make it bigger and better. We'd especially like to thank our research associates, James Glasgow, Joe Sevitz, Edward Lillehome, and Brian Nam, and of course, our Surgeon Admiral Sam.